Welcome to today's session. So today we continue looking at the 2021 Mathematics Paper 1 exams. So we've done question 1 up to question 10 in the first two parts. So in today's part, we are starting with question 11. So question 11 leads, the positions of three towns, A, B, and C, on the Earth's surface are shown in the diagram below. Question A, a plane flying a distance of 4,500 nautical miles direct from town A to B takes 5 hours. Find the speed of the plane in knots. So what we know is basically speed is given by distance over time. So in this case we know that distance is 4,500 nautical miles. Then what's the time? It's taking... Five hours. Remember, not is not commas per hour. So we divide by five. So what we get is uh, five into forty-five is nine. Then nine hundred nautical miles per hour, which is basically nine hundred knots. As our answer. So our answer on A is nine hundred knots. Then we go to B. B, if town C is 5 hours of ahead of town A, okay, which is town C, this one, ahead of town A, find the longitude marked X, longitude marked X. So, we have this longitude, 25 degrees west, then we have going to find this, where this one lies. So, the first thing that we need to remember is if you forget, you do forget in an exam, you need to find how many degrees make up one hour. So the total cycle of the longitude is 360 degrees rotation. Then we divide by how many hours are in, in a day? 24, because the Earth takes 24 hours to rotate completely. So what we get is 24 into 360, so here we divide by 12, okay, 12 here is basically 2, 12 into is this 30, 2 into 30 is 15 degrees. So for every one hour, for every one hour we have 15 degrees difference. So now the difference is 5 hours, so the difference is 5 hours, so what we know is it's basically 15 degrees multiplied by 5 hours, we get 75 degrees difference. So now if you have 75 degrees difference, we know that we are already 25 to the west. And at GMT, GMT is the zero degree. Then this side we have west, this side we have east. So for us to move from 25 degrees west to GMT, we are taking out 25 from 75. So 75 degrees minus 25, then we have basically 50 degrees. So meaning to the east, to the east we have 50 degrees east. So this is basically 50 degrees east as the, the longitude. So the longitude marked X is 50 degrees east. So basically this is how you deal with question 11. So let us move to question 12. So question 12 leads, Elena measured the length of a line to be 2.2 cm. If the actual length is 2 cm, find the absolute error. So the absolute error A is given by the observed minus the actual. Then the absolute difference. So when, when we say the absolute difference, what it means is the difference, whether it's a minus or positive, is always taken as a positive. Okay? So what this entails us, what is the observed? So this to this learner has measured it to be 2.2. 2.2 centimeter when in 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 fact is two centimeters so the actual is two centimeter which is two point zero so difference here is basically zero point two then this is absolute so when it's positive there is no issue when it's positive there is no issue but when it's negative let us say for example just for example this learner instead measured maybe one point eight okay so in this case the absolute error absolute error will be uh, 1.8 minus 2.0, which is the actual 2. So we end up with negative 0 0.2, then absolute. So in this case, since it's below, 
still more the answer will be 0 0.2 which is a positive so that's what the absolute means whether it's above or below whether it's under estimation or estimation you take that difference from the actual to be positive then let us move to part b percentage error so percentage error is given by the absolute error divided by the actual value so what you're saying how far by percentage did this error miss the actual mark so in this case 0 0.2 over 2.0 multiplied by 100 so what this gives us it's giving us basically um 100 percent so it's giving us basically uh So we divide here 2, here we get a 10, we divide by here 1, then this one into is a 10. 10 into 100%, we get 10%. So this may, this learner, the learner, this learner our, was above the actual. By how many? We are, was off the mark by 10%. In this case, because it's positive, so it's above. But it, we are saying this learner was 10% of the actual uh, measurement when measuring. Okay. So that's how we deal with question uh, 11. Let us go question 12. Let us go to question 13. Again, question 13 is a bit different. If someone has a much clearer version, you can still share with me. So question 13 is on the sequel theorem. So we have points A. B and C and D are on the circumference of a circle, okay, circumference of a circle, then center O, such that angle AOC is equal to 126, AO is parallel to DC, and angle OCB is equal to 33 degrees, find ADC. So let me just quickly draw so that we are able to see clearly. So this is the center. Then we have that. Then we have this line. Okay. Then we are drawing this like that. Then this one. Then this one in such a way that they are like this. These are parallel. Okay. Then this is the center. Okay. Then we know this is B. Then this is C. Then this is A then this is d then this is center then we are asked to find a dc okay of course here we've been given this is 33 degrees then this is 126 degrees so we can quickly answer some of the question quickly so what we know is the angle at the center is twice the angle at the circumference so this is the center so this is the angle at the circumference so this angle should be half of 126 which should give us 68 degrees Okay, then what we know is if that's 68 degrees, we can find this angle this side. So because this is the entire set, set, so for us to know this angle, we need to know this angle. So to know this angle, this side is basically 360 minus 126. So 360 minus 126, what we end up with, what we end up with is basically... Uh, a 4, then here we have a 5, then we have 3, then so basically we have 234. So 234 divided by 2, we end up with a 1, then uh, 1, then 14, so 117. So what we know is this angle should be 117 degrees. Okay? Then if we know that angle, if we know that angle, we can know this angle. Because this is, if you extend this is 180, so this angle is equal to this angle because these two lines these two lines are parallel. So to find that angle, it will just be basically 180 minus 126 because if you extend this line, it's a straight line. So we get basically 54, 54 degrees. So what this entails us, this lead angle here, this angle here, this angle is basically 54 degrees. If this is 54 degrees, because these two lines are parallel, then this angle should also be 54 degrees. Should be 54 degrees degrees okay then okay so we've done a number of them then question one a so a is asking us to find a angle a dc angle d a, a dc so angle a 
ADC. And go ADC, we've already found it to be 117. Okay. And go ADC to be 117 degrees. Then and go OCD. OCD, we've already found it to be 54. So 54 degrees. Okay. Then and go BAO. BAO. So we are looking for this angle. So that's the angle we are looking for. So we know that what we know is we know that this angle here plus this angle here plus this angle here plus this entire angle here should give us 360 degrees. 360 degrees because it is a complete uh, triangle. So the, the angle in a trapezium which is touching the circumferences gives us or 360 degrees or in this case it looks like a kite so what we have we have basically uh, we have let us call this angle that we don't know why so we have y is it plus so we have this 54 plus 117 54 plus 117 plus we have 33 plus 54 okay 33 plus 54 which gives us uh, basically 80 7 then plus 68 must is equal to 360 okay then when we add this when we do add this what we basically end up with so remember we do our mathematics it's important that we add properly in when we are dealing with this so when we start adding this so this plus that plus that okay what we end up with is y plus so what i have is basically one one seven then i have uh 54 then i have 87 then i have 68 so i can easily add this so i have seven plus four which is 11 plus 17 18 plus plus eight i have five then Remainder 2, then 1 plus 5, 6 plus uh, 8, which is 14, plus 6, 20, plus 2, 22, then plus, so I have 2, then I have, this is 6, 14, so 22, then plus, so I write that 2, then I have 1 plus uh, 2, which is uh, Three, so I have three twenty-five. Okay, hopefully I've done correctly. So, just to counter check, this is eleven, eighteen, twenty-five, five. Then six plus eight, fourteen plus six twenty. Okay, so I have three twenty-five. So three twenty-five is equal to a uh, three sixty. So meaning y is equal to basically 360 minus 3, uh, 25. So I end up with y is equal to 35 degrees. So y is basically equal to 35 degrees. Okay. So basically, this is how you deal with this kind of equation. Okay. Okay. Let us look at question 14. Question 14 leads. The diagram below shows three points, J, K, and L, on the level ground. K is due east of J. K is due east of J. Angle L, J, K is 70 degrees. Angle J, K, L is 30 degrees. Okay. So find the bearing of K from L. So we are standing at L. So basically, we're standing at L and draw the north here. This is the north. Then we want to see how many degrees we need to rotate to face K when you're standing at L. So we're looking for this angle. So that's the angle we are looking at. Okay. So now what we know is we draw this line here. Okay. Then if you notice here is this is this angle. Then we have this angle. Okay. Right, we have that angle. 
So if you are to find and you are told that k is due east of j. So this is due east of j. Okay. Then what that tells us this line meets at 90 degrees if it's due east of so if we are to find this angle which is equal to this angle what we need to do is we need to to be 90 minus 30 degrees because this angle and this angle they are, they, they are the same so it will be basically 60 degrees so the bearing of uh k from l is 30 degrees remember j is here but we're not told that l l is south of j it's not but j and k j k is east of j so this line north and this one they're meeting at 90 degrees so we know this 90 degrees if you know this 90 degrees we know that this angle which remains here should be 90 degrees because the straight line makes up 180 so it will be now to find this angle it will be 90 minus 30 then we remain with 60. so if you stand at l and draw the north if you are to rotate cl clockwise to face the line that is going to k we need to rotate how many degrees 60 degrees which is the bearing there then j from l j from l so j from l now in this case so what we have is we need to know this so we have this just to redraw this one this is 70 degrees this is 30 degrees then this is j then this is l so this is basically l then what we need to know is we draw a north here the north where this angle here is 60 degrees as we found then we we draw also a north here okay where we know that this line is is 90 degrees before for k to be east of j then we know that so now the question is asking us to find the bearing of j from l j from l so if you stand at l here how many degrees do we need to rotate to face j okay at l so we know if this is 70 degrees we can find this angle so this angle is basically 20 degrees from 90 so meaning if this is 20 degrees then this angle is also 20 degrees because this north the north are parallel so to find the bearing of j from l which is b j from l we get basically 360 minus 20 degrees we end up with 340 degrees 340 degrees so that's for uh 14 so this is how you deal with question 14. okay so unfortunately question 15 is very very faint i can't even see but it's only quadratic it's only functions it's only function so if someone has a clear version please you can kindly share with me then i'll be able to solve it independently so for today this is where we end we'll pick it up from question 16 up to question 20 in our fourth episode thank you very much for joining us today till next time shalom